Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Crossroads of the World, Times Square. It is indeed a magnet for businesses and consumers, for tourists and characters of all kind, which is why they let me in. I'm supposed to be funny. You were supposed to laugh, guys. I'm not paying attention, or my humor is not good. Uh, we are working hard to keep it this way and ensuring that this area also remains a testament to smart, sustainable, attractive uh, urban design. And on that front, we have some exciting news to share. Today here on Broadway between 42nd and 43rd Street, we are cutting the ribbon on the first of five pedestrian plazas that will continue the historic transformation of Times Square. Now, you'll recall that we first closed this area to vehicles back in 2009. Uh, the Green Light for Midtown initiative was a pilot project. Uh, it was something people said, wow, I remember when Sadiq Khan came to me and said, I want to close Broadway, and I said, you want to do what? Uh, but the more she made the case, the more I thought it made a lot of sense, and uh, she was right. The results of that experiment have been tremendously positive for public safety, for economy, and for traffic flow. And that's why we are making it permanent. And that's why the city is moving forward with our plans to create more plaza space between here and 42nd Street as well. One of our big problems is all over the city, neighborhoods and merchants want to close the streets because it has been so successful here. Unfortunately, in a lot of places, there are no alternatives to move traffic. In this case, closing a diagonal street through a grid actually does improve traffic flow. And we have good ways of measuring it because of all the taxis who are on the GPS and the computer knows exactly how long it takes to go from here to there. So when people say, oh, it's faster or slower, that's park bench wisdom that depends on your last trip. The real numbers you have are from the computer, and that says that this is a big success in every one of the areas that I mentioned. Uh, in terms of the pedestrian plazas, more than 400,000 pedestrians pass through Times Square every day. And with the improvements we've made to this plaza's infrastructure, lighting, and broadcasting connections, it can host more public events like this one. Now, without worrying about traffic, people can come for entertainment or for a stroll. They can sit down and relax. They can also keep shopping. And since we started remaking Times Square four years ago, it has become one of the 10 most successful retail destinations in the world, a first in its history. The increase in foot traffic has been a boon for business, and our city, the redesign for our city, the redesign of Times Square has meant safer pedestrians and quicker traffic. Our outstanding transportation commissioner, Jeanette, must have written this. Did you put the word outstanding in? Uh, I'm glad yeah. she did. Okay. Jeanette said it come. We'll have a little more to say about that in a few moments. But let me just say that this plaza is one example, just one example, of the success our administration has had in reinventing open spaces throughout the five boroughs. And through DOT's plaza program, a total of 59 such areas have been completed or are currently in develop, le development, leading to 26 new acres of public space. And we're making those public spaces even more inviting through great design. Now, when people think of big public projects, they typically think of big highways, grand buildings, that sort of thing. In New York, we've taken care to integrate innovative design into every aspect of our city's built environment, and that commitment certainly comes across in a project like this plaza, which raises our city's aesthetic quality at the same time it improves our quality of life. Our Department of Design and Construction, or DDC as it's known, established a Design and Construction, construction Excellence, in Excellence Initiative to put the most talented professionals to work on city projects, in fact, DDC selected the architect firm Snaheta to design the Times Square Plaza. And several members of Snaheta have joined us today for today's announcement. Will they raise their hands, Snaheta people? Thank you very much. You guys are just you really are brilliant and great. This is one of the great architectural firms around. Uh, and they deserve a nice round of applause for all of us. Uh, DDC's Commissioner David Burney couldn't be with us today, but he deserves tremendous credit for leading an exciting era in New York City's proud design history. He has spearheaded projects of all shapes and all sizes, including in Times Square. And our Transportation Commissioner has said it very well. She said, quote, David gets what we need more than bike lanes and plazas. We need beautiful bike lanes and plazas. And Jeanette's going to tell us a little bit more about all that work, both at the ground level and far below. And that goes into bringing a beautiful plaza like this to life. Jeanette. Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg, our outstanding mayor. And welcome, everyone, to the new Times Square. Uh, yay. 
Standing here today in what used to be roadbed, it's really hard to remember what Times Square was like four years ago. And for years, it was a place that pushed pedestrians into the street and tied up drivers in a sea of traffic. It was filled with taxis and tour buses. It was crowded. It was dangerous. It was certainly not worthy of a world-class city. And that all changed on May 24th, 2009, when the 4,000 people that pass through it every day were given the safe pedestrian spaces they deserved. Closing Times Square to cars was a radical idea. And I will never forget what Mayor Bloomberg said to me uh, when we talked about it. He did say, you want to do what? But together, we went through the plan to make Broadway into a pedestrian boulevard from 42nd to 47th Street and to simplify the traffic pattern. We presented it as a pilot and would extensively study the impact on traffic and safety and the use of public space. If it worked, we would keep it. If not, we would put it back to the way it was before. And true to form, Mayor Bloomberg not only endorsed the plan, but he did so in an election year. And I can't imagine another leader that would have the vision and political courage to do the right thing and stand by that uh, at any kind of political risk. And because it's New York, where there are over 8 million people and at any time 16 million opinions, we faced a few skeptics. Predictions ranged from Carmageddon-style gridlock to windswept empty plazas. But Mayor Bloomberg has always been interested in innovation and making the city work better for its people and its businesses, even if that meant political risk. And the results from the six-month pilot were a huge success. Injuries to pedestrians have dropped by 24%. Total injuries are down 31%. This is in part due to the fact that there are 80% fewer people walking in the road. And the big retail returns are not surprising considering the increase in pedestrians walking in Times Square since the project began. The paint and planters proved the idea allowing the world-class design we're inaugurating today to follow in relatively short order given the complexity of construction in Times Square. This is an important point and it's not limited to this site. We've shown that with creativity and imagination, we can deliver the safety, economic, mobility, and quality of life benefits of better streets to the public quickly with temporary materials using real world experience to get the design right and then follow that up with permanent high quality materials. I think this is one of the biggest innovations that the Bloomberg administration has brought to the streets of New York and it's being replicated around the world. For Times Square, this means New Yorkers will enjoy 140,000 square feet of the most famous public real estate in the world, including the 30,000 feet we're opening today. It's a mammoth job. In addition to the new pavers and seating, the underground work includes replacing water mains from 1904, sewers from 1919, and century-old streetcar tracks. It also adds electrical and media connections for world-famous events like the New Year's Eve ball drop next week. For us, there is no better way to close out this administration than to celebrate a project that's improved the daily life of tens of thousands of New Yorkers who work here, boosted the retail and theater industry, and changed the way the world thinks about streets and public life. A generation of New Yorkers is growing up assuming that city bikes, plazas, and world-class spaces are the norm. That's due to the visionary leadership and political courage of Mayor Bloomberg, who made this happen. He cared about the ideas. He cared about the details. He stood for bold changes when others would have folded. Working for Mayor Bloomberg has been an honor. You've changed the streets of New York forever and inspired the world. Thank you. Um, all I did was have the smarts to hire you and a bunch of other people, actually, if the truth be known, and then letting you do something. Uh, and t the Times Square Alliance has been a great partner in taking this uh, neighborhood in bold and creative new directions. Uh, the Alliance president, Tim Tompkins, uh, really is somebody that deserves an enormous amount of credit. Generally, people that have jobs like his are caretakers. This is a guy who pushes the envelope, who thinks about new things. I don't know how many of the merchants in Times Square really understand the gem that they have in this guy, but it happens to be that uh, a lot of what's done on in Times Square is because of him. Tim, congratulations. Thanks so much.
Because a picture is worth a thousand words, I'm not going to say anything about the plazas. You see how fabulous it is. Just a few thank yous. First to the crew at DDC, Joe and Tom Foley and Eric McFarlane. This is not an easy thing to build in the middle of Times Square, and it's very, very tough work. So thank you to all the folks at DDC and to David Bernie for his focus on design quality. Thank you all. <laughs> to the folks at DOT from Andy Wiley Schwartz, uh, to Margaret Newman, and also the folks at the Alliance, like Ellen Goldstein and Tom Harris, who are, uh, are were so much a part of making this happen. Thank you, and also, I mean, with respect to Tom Harris, our operations guy, we found our first piece of gum on the plaza. It's been removed, and um, this will be a gum-free space. We're just saying that, okay? Um, and uh, so thanks to them. Thanks to the amazing design team at Snowheada for all that they've done. Thank you, uh, Gail Brewer, as a council member and also as a future borough president, Scott Stringer, all the electeds that have supported this. Uh, thanks to the folks at Con Ed as well. Um, for the mayor, just three things. First of all, thank you for all the things you've done for Times Square. Not just this, but Duffy Square up north, the amazing spotlight on Broadway project, bringing all the tourists to Times Square. It's a, it's a changed world because of your work, and thank you, and keeping crime down especially. Um, uh, thank you, Catherine, for your uh, focus on making Spotlight on Broadway and finally having a virtual and, and actual digital uh, Broadway museum that's going to be happening, that's telling the story of Broadway. Jeanette, you've been absolutely tenacious. You've been great. You've been tough. And you have made this happen. And so you are a testimony to combining tenacity with vision and what that can do. We see it here. Thank you. We weren't always kissing cousins, let me tell you. Um, and then uh, two other things, Mayor. Uh, you said in your Abney speech, which was a great speech, you said, if, you quoted Einstein saying, if at first the idea is not absurd, then there is no hope, hope for it. So let's have a round of applause for absurd ideas that actually end up being great visions. <laughs> Finally, you were on SNL, and you said if, you, if your next job isn't Pope, you might end up being the uh, naked cowboy. So, you know, um, sometimes, you know, he works for, first of all, you got to negotiate with him. It's trademarked, you know. We don't do anything half-assed here. And, um, and, but after a long day being the naked cowboy, you may need to sit and relax. So I want to give you and Jeanette the original Times Square Beach Chairs. <laughs> so here you are. Thank you. All right, so you can come down. You're always welcome to come and hang out in your own special beach chairs. Real high class, real high class. So anyway, thank you very much. Well, if I can't negotiate something with a naked cowboy, I could. I happen to own the pattern on the naked, short, Jewish, balding, 72-year-old man. Now there's a market. It is. There's a market for everything in Times Square. Uh, Times Square's renovation includes a few blocks north of here, a new underground, in-ground map that highlights Broadway's extensive theater district. And to say more about Times Square and the spotlight on Broadway project. Our great commissioner of our Office of Media Entertainment, Catherine Oliver. K.O. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. When I think of Times Square, I think of Broadway. And we have 40 theaters, 40 gems that are in the theater district. And to illustrate that, we've created an amazing map, Spotlight on Broadway. And this is the brochure that we've been handing out around town. But the physical map is in the ground on Duffy Square. So we invite you to run through the raindrops and to go visit this amazing map. Stephen Doyle from Doyle Partners is here. And he designed it. It's a work of art. Um, Jake Barton from Barton Associates and Barton Partners helped us create the website and designed uh, all of the elements there. We invite you to visit SpotlightOnBroadway.com to learn more about the history of the theater district in New York. There's information in text, but we've also created these 40 short videos on each of the individual theaters. Our partner is the Broadway League. Charlotte St. Martin has been an amazing partner. Bob Wankel from the Schubert organization is here. He's on our advisory board. Much more to come with this project in the future. Uh, but I want to thank all of the folks at the Department of Transportation uh, for making this possible. You got it done in time, and I will be eternally grateful. Uh, the Design Commission as well, the Art Commission, of course the Public Design Commission, and all the folks at my agency who worked so hard to make this possible. So please visit the map on Duffy Square. It's officially unveiled today and also visit our website, spotlightonbroadway.com. K.O., thank you. And our next speaker is the Manhattan Borough President-elect City Council Member, Gail Brewer. Gail? 
Thank you very much. I'm obviously the new kid on the block, but I am so impressed with what particularly Jeanette Sadi Khan has done. Her vision um, is something that I think we all need to replicate around the five boroughs, but particularly Manhattan. So I want to thank the mayor. Tim Tompkins has briefed me on all the great things that are going on in Times Square, and I look forward to trying to continue this amazingly innovative group of people. Thank you very much. Gail, yeah, thank you. Before we take some questions, let me just summarize today's announcement for our Spanish-speaking New Yorkers. Estamos hambriendo la primera de cinco nuevas plazas, peatonales en Times Square. Son una parte de nuestros esfuerzos para hacer esta área que es reconocida mundialmente más segura, más acogedora y más dinámico. And with that, we'll be happy to take some questions.